Hello, welcome to the Studio Utani podcast, where we're going to ask the question, what's the story, mother? Uh, I'm Matt, and I'm joined today by Baker. It's me. And uh, we also have Justin Macy with us today. Hello. Uh, um, so technically, this is actually the first episode of What's the Story, Mother? Because if you look at the thumbnails of the previous <laughs> ones, it's uh, uh, What's the Story, Mother? Her? Um, so, you know, this is now like the pilot episode, but it is also... <laughs> the, yes, but it's also the... Um, the uh, fifth episode of the Dune show, so <laughs> the it's, grand finale. Yeah, uh, see a season season finale, but yeah, it's a uh, yes, season it's, one. Yeah, yeah, it's right. not it's not too confusing. It's just confusing enough. Um, but <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the three of us went to go see Dune, uh, the new Dune, of course, this past weekend, and uh, we're gonna talk a bit about that. Um. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, but we do have some other we do have some other stories to talk about first. Um, one thing I did want to ask Justin because you uh, weren't able to join us for the uh, the David oh, Lynch right. Dune um, episode. Did you uh, did you have anything to, to say about that movie? Yeah, yeah, I gave I gave it a shot. You know, I sat down to watch it, and uh, <laughs> probably by a half hour in, I was asleep. Mm. And, uh, yeah. well you know that kind of kind of speaks true to what we said about it it was kind of hard to really get into and you know we'll talk about it when we get to it uh, but I, I feel like the new dune was more successful in like humanizing the story um it was did very kind of rigid it. lynch's version which is weird because that's not something i would call lynch's other movies Mm -hmm. by what, any means like like what would you say about Lynch's it was very it was very rigid very um uh-huh like it well, had a structure it had to meet well, I, I it, it's, it's, it's the un it's unfortunate because lynch is such a, an experimental filmmaker that you know when you put him in charge of such a big movie like that it's like well you have to sell the movie and yeah mm -hmm. you could it, tell he didn't he he didn't really have a choice yeah. As to what he did, seemed yeah. like. Yeah, and I mean that's that's fair. he doesn't like talking about it, and uh, he's, he's uh, disowned it. Yeah, well, he's pretty. He said that um, that he shouldn't have taken it on, and you know, it's. I I think it's cool that they got an experimental filmmaker to try and do um, such a movie, but it was it was probably always destined to uh, not work out. Uh, but you can listen to our. Uh, me and Baker talk about David Lynch's Dune in uh, episode four. Um, we're we're gonna move on. Um, <coughs> Let's move on quickly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, we do have a couple other stories to talk about. Um, the first one uh, is only kind of tangently related to uh, alien and science fiction. Um, Justin and I. Uh, Last night we went to go see the new Ridley Scott film, The Last Duel, and uh, we're not going to talk about it too much, um, but we felt like it was worth mentioning. Um, we both we both went into the movie with no expectations. Like we were like, well, is this going to be a good Ridley Scott movie or is this going to be a bad Ridley Scott movie? I didn't know, and I felt like it was kind of uneven in a way but ultimately i thought it was actually really really good and uh justin i think you um you felt the same way about yeah it. yeah it exceeded my expectations i thought it it told a, it told the story the way it needed to be told mm -hmm. you know and uh just think, i thought it, the production of the whole thing was incredible yeah. you know it's it's rare to see a good historical epic like that and i think he Mm -hmm. he did it right yeah you know he's still got it we were saying yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, ridley is a class act he's he's one of my favorite filmmakers even if not everything he does is necessarily amazing i i think he he's very 
consistent in how he demonstrates his, you know his you know uh, mastery over the craft of filmmaking and this film is no exception um it, it is currently though uh bombing pretty hard uh the budget for the film was something around a hundred million dollars and it's currently recouped about 10 million um Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty pretty bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure that can be attributed to the pandemic. They actually started production prior to the pandemic, and you know it had to stop at some point, and then they continued on and finished the movie. But um, and that and it's unfortunate people aren't going to see it because it's actually a really fantastic film. Um, you know, brutal. By the yes, way, yeah, it yes, is it's it's a very graphic movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it deals with some tough subject matter, very head-on. Yeah. yeah. Does not shy away from anything. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, the the violence in the movie, I was kind of surprised by how bloody it was. Because there's even a couple m- moments in it where it it's almost, like, comically violent. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. but, but then it also, um, and, and this isn't really... A spoiler because it's talked about in the uh the marketing but the, the plot of this film does revolve around a uh, sexual assault and um that particular moment in the film is extremely brutal and you know so if you're somebody who is not uh when uh, if you're troubled by that sort of thing that trigger you know, that's, warning yeah, yeah yeah basically trigger warning uh but um, great film. Um, Ridley Scott. Uh, Ridley Scott still got it. Uh, you know, if you get a chance to see it, it is it is highly recommended. Um, and great performances all around. Yeah, yes. the cast looks pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. saw the trailer for this when mm-hmm. I went to go see Teton, and I remember yeah, thinking yeah, it looked pretty yeah. cool. I didn't know it was Ridley Scott. Yeah, so that's awesome. Well, no, yeah, check it out. It's yeah, it, yeah. And, it's and, worth and, it. and what's also really interesting uh, the, uh, is something I just thought of. Um, Ridley Scott's first movie is called The Duelists, and this movie is The Last Duel. Oh, oh is Ridley Scott announcing <laughs> his retirement? <laughs> Confirmed. Like, well, not Disney's, Disney's not going to let me do my new Alien movie, so, you know, what does ma- anything matter anymore? Uh, my last stand. Yeah. Um, but that aside, yeah, uh, fantastic film. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing that... Uh, we kind of got lined up here and this is actually something that came up like shortly either during or shortly after we recorded the last episode but uh the game uh uh um what is it what do you what is that fire team? what's that oh no no, fire no. Team. well yeah we're yeah we're, we're talking about fire team but uh is the, the kotaku the um oh gaming yeah. news site um dropped an article talking about the player base of aliens fire team elite and you go on to uh what is it it's steam check or whatever um yeah you uh, can see how steam charts steam charts thank you uh and uh, yeah basically basically uh, very few people are still playing this game about like a month or so after it's come out and there could be on a number Steam, on PC, uh, uh, at least on Steam, but I think there's probably similar numbers on console. Uh, but mm-hmm. it, it basically is like less than 800 people are, are still playing this game, and I <laughs> I haven't I haven't looked at some of the numbers of like the the top games that are on there, but um, I mean if you're talking like if if that's supposed to be like the worldwide like player base that's that's kind of low but um that's, rough. Yeah, that's the it, case yeah it's uh but it it kind of reflects the experience that i had with it a little bit because it started out with really strong numbers and then it just dropped like significantly and really that was that was kind of me like i played it up for a little bit when it first came out and i have uh i've not really been too terribly compelled to revisit it um and it's not that it's necessarily a bad game because there's like there's a lot of people that like it if you look at the reviews on steam it's got a really positive reviews from users um but 
I really wasn't compelled to continue playing it because for me, I it just I, I feel like an alien game should be scary. And <laughs> it just really wasn't scary at all. I I felt like uh, it was just kind of a shoot 'em up. You know, there's hordes of aliens coming in and uh and you're just shooting at them and they don't really pose any threat. Uh, more like uh aliens than alien for but, sure if you're looking at it compared to like isolation but but even in a- aliens though the they were still a threat it was just mm-hmm. they were despite the superior firepower of the marines the the creatures was were more determined and they were and they're of course they're up against an enemy they don't know anything about um yeah the stakes are always high in an alien movie in yeah. a good alien movie yeah and yeah, in yeah. Aliens, Fire Team Elite, I was yeah. there when you were playing it one yeah. time. And... You can see that on the channel, and we we kind of <laughs> just went into a stream of consciousness, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I don't I don't want to badger the game too much. It's not really the point. I just I I, I think it's noteworthy to talk about because. It, alien video games are always a little bit weird. Like even if you look at like Alien Isolation, like. Alien Isolation was lauded, and to this day, it continues to be a very popular title. They keep on porting it to new consoles, but when it came mm-hmm. out, it, it didn't sell well. Like, nobody bought this game. And, yeah. and I'm just like, I don't... It, it's a bit of a perplexing issue, because even with Fire Team, like, I don't personally think it's all that amazing, but... A lot of people like it apparently and but then nobody is really playing it, it there's just some weird like what what, what is that it, it's you know, <laughs> well the, i mean the people's, opi- team, people's opinions team. versus <laughs> what people are actually you know doing you know sure i mean it sold really well at first and then there's kind of a gradual drop off it looks like whereas isolation's kind of spread from word of mouth is really good people would stream it Mm -hmm. it kind of built up a reputation so right Uh, i was just playing it the other day halloween spooky time uh, alien isolation is is you know fantastic and i'd like to see something like that done with the colonial marines i but i think it's Mm -hmm. it's a difficult thing to do because what's scary about isolation is they take the gun away from you and even when you do get it it's basically (laughs) it's useless against the alien uh so you're in as far as a video game is concerned there's a weird thing here because whenever you have a gun in in a game that's gun is is powerful but you have to somehow have a gun and all these other weapons and be vulnerable you need ammo scarcity you need like portions where you can't use your gun maybe maybe the creep not being able to see the creatures and they just sort of come Mm. out of the dark like that was something with face huggers differently i I mean that was the thing with fire team it's like they highlight they put the highlight around the aliens so you you can see them oh i hate that in any game really yeah and (laughs) i don't know if that's like just a setting or something but i'm like you always hope i don't like that at all (laughs) when i'm playing it elder scrolls online did that not really (laughs) i haven't played elder scrolls online in Uh, god knows how long yeah Yeah. uh, yeah, I don't know, but anyway, uh, if I, I I don't know, it just seemed like an interesting thing to kind of talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, it's 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 too bad. I, the one thing I will say about Fire Team Elite is that it is, you know, a better game than uh, Aliens Colonial Marines, which came out like God nine years ago at this point, um, but. I, I I think the difference is like it, the people behind Fireteam are clearly passionate about the franchise where Colonial Marines was more like really cynical like hey Aliens is a brand that people recognize oh, yeah. Uh, yeah um and you know it does seem like there's like more story and they like draw some connections to like the prequel films and whatnot and that that is interesting but just based off the first level, eh, I didn't really feel like I wanted to play more. I was like, I wasn't given any indication that the gameplay was going to change or the strategy was going to change. It was just going to be shooting aliens. And maybe that's 
appealing to like casual gamers but i wanted something and a little bit like left for dead right like you you kind of go through it once and maybe sure. there isn't a huge retention rate and you just beat the game and but even with left for dead though i mean left for dead yeah, there's more there <laughs> but there's there's some like genuinely scary stuff in left for dead like you feel like mm -hmm. a sense of dread like when you see the witch zombie and it's like oh yeah don't don't startle the witch it's like there's really nothing in from what i could tell in fire team about like um beyond just like just shoot point and shoot maybe so. the dlc <laughs> We'll yeah. bring some, uh, May maybe back. i don't know maybe i'm not being fair to it because i really only did play the first level maybe i need to give another shot but yeah i haven't know. played any so <laughs> i'm yeah. just riffing here uh, if, if if i do that and you know i'm proven wrong i will come on here and i will apologize to every single one of you and say we'll dedicate I was, a whole I, episode yeah i was wrong but um that's just kind of <laughs> how i feel about it um but you're not here to talk about, you know, medieval historical epics or, uh, you know, maybe kind of possibly bland alien video games. We're here to talk about the important thing, which is Dune. Oh, shit. Yes. We, uh, we went to go see this thing at the premiere Thursday night. Um, epic experience. Um, which what what does that mean by the way it's just like just enhanced sound and kind of enhanced like, sound uh, the screen's bigger it's a like curved right yeah it's not quite imax but it's you yeah know, it's still it's cool. like it's bigger than your your standard uh you know like we saw the last duel in a really tiny theater uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i didn't even know there was a theater that small over there yeah it was it was yeah and i was actually <laughs> the same few there were a few other people with us who were like, are we going to be like the only people in the theater? We can do an MST 3k on this, uh, but other people <laughs> did show up and it was very, very small. So we were all very close. Um, social right. distancing though. We were all wearing masks. Um, nice. uh, but um, yeah, we saw Dune on, on Thursday night and uh, God, where to, uh, where to begin? Um, oh, well, real quickly, the box office has come in. Oh, because uh, it's Sunday. It has made forty million, which doesn't sound great, but well, it, it it is the highest amount HBO's made off the movie during the pandemic. Yeah, uh, beat, God versus beat, versus yeah, Kong. Yeah, got thirty beat, million. Yeah, because Godzilla. Yeah, well, Godzilla versus Kong, I think, ultimately had like thirty six million. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but but uh, but yeah, forty million beats it. Thirty one. I, I have. And yeah. if I'm not mistaken, the projected numbers and you know it was. The, the problem is with these movies, like even like The Last Duel that started, that were made before the pandemic, it's like yeah. they, they can't look at it like, well, it didn't make $500 million and so it's a failure. Mm -hmm. They have to look at, based on the circumstances, what's the interest in it? And it, I forget what the projected numbers for Dune were. I, I think they said they were uh projecting 30 million uh opening oh, weekend. okay and That's... if it and if it made 40 million that means it actually exceeded their expectations mm -hmm. a lot um, of people streaming it too so i know how that's factored in oh absolutely and i keep seeing ads for it now that it's out mm -hmm. with a lot of like make sure to watch it on the biggest screen possible it's um, like they're really trying to drive the box office well up this well weekend. well and, well here's the thing just just and speaking, it's true yeah just speaking for myself <laughs> Yeah, see, yeah. If, see this movie and see it on the biggest screen that you yeah, can. Yeah, I didn't mean that to be a cynical take. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think it, 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 yeah, watching it, on the laptop would be a huge mistake. It, yeah, it, it's like the grandness of it and and just the spectacle of it, it it demands that you see it on the big screen. You're, you're, I don't feel... It, it's like there are a lot of movies where I say it's like, you know, it, it, if you, however you want to watch it, you know, that's a personal choice. But mm -hmm. this David is... David Lynch has a take about that. <laughs> a, a lot of filmmakers have a take about that. A lot of filmmakers are like cinema only. And, you know, I get it. I totally get it. Um, but I, I, for a lot of times, I'm like, you know what? If you watch it on, you know, your TV or even your laptop, it's like, it's not drastically changing the experience but this movie i i think it demands 
Mm -hmm. you know the cinema experience the um, epic experience yeah well <laughs> and, and well not everybody has an mjr so i don't <laughs> i don't know if, <coughs> uh, party in hollywood yeah 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 oh my god i, I every get single copyright for that well I hope, <laughs> I, I hope i hope not uh and i don't know like i think mgr is like just a michigan only chain. i think so yeah yeah so it's like anybody else who's not like part of it it's like I, it's they got the steam song and there's like everybody like they you know claps during it and i'm just like oh, oh my god i got <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's catchy but it's also very cringy um mm -hmm but well, well put yeah yeah um but uh okay uh we're, we're gonna start with this movie um so um first off um what what are your guys' thoughts on it? i um I, it. I yeah i i fucking love this thing i i was <laughs> just like every single moment like i i, I was open to the i i was hyped for this movie and i was open to the possibility that you know maybe it's gonna be a little bit boring but not even one minute of, of the mm -hmm. film like, i was i was invested the the entire time this is the most hyped you've been for dune ever <laughs> oh, yeah. seen. Right. So, well, i mean makes sense it's just I've, like i've only just was a fan because of um denise villeneuve was doing it like mm -hmm. I, I was, I want to see that guy's uh, science fiction movies, um, especially after Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and that's honestly the fact that he was doing this is kind of what pulled me into the Dune universe. So, oh yeah, uh, maybe yeah. I'm a fan now. I don't know. Um, Justin, what 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 did you feel about well, it? Yeah, it, it exceeded my expectations. You know, I'm not usually a big fan of uh, you know, I guess high science fiction or fantasy. Mm -hmm. Sure, you know, but I. I liked, uh, I thought that the, the story felt very relatable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, and it was, I mean, you know, it's been, I'm sure it's been talked to death about how the political allegory of it, but I think Denis made that so clear and so like important mm -hmm. to the story. And, and you know, he that, rooted uh, it. Yeah. Oh, you go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was just going to say, like, compared to like the lynch version like you know justin you said he kind of fell asleep during the first 30 minutes of it and <laughs> the the thing is like the thing i'll say about the lynch version is like when it's first starting out and like we're in like the that that courtroom it's almost like right away i just feel super alienated by everything that's happening because it just feels like really weird and really alien and i don't know why and i don't know why i'm supposed to care about anything that's happening right now and right mm -hmm. off the bat in this one um denis kind of puts the story into a familiar context that helps that helps us as audiences to you know not only like grab onto what the story is like right away but you know understand it in a way that feels familiar uh, kind of humanizing the conflict in the world of, of doom yeah it's about like a mother and a son and a, yeah, but, a, well, a husband well, and a wife and like well, it's family things at the center of it well even it's about but, a family it's about a country mm -hmm. you know or a plant or a house well so it's even, pretty much about a country but right, yeah right. but but yeah. even before that even before that just like when they're setting up the central conflict it's like right away it's like you know it's a story about power and oppression and you know you know the houses trying to take control of this planet and who's ultimately profiting and who's ultimately suffering and mm -hmm. i don't know if that's I, i'm sure that's something that can be read into denise or excuse me frank herbert's book and it's pro it's a, probably a big part of frank herbert's book um hmm. but i i'm 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 not entirely sure about that but i, I think Th that's um, my understanding it's been kind of i because I, I think, think it's been talked to death the political allegory yeah. Yeah. Of uh, from everything i've heard is this is very good adaptation that captures a lot of the stuff in the books well that I'm, previous I'm adaptations did not really focus on sure uh, i guess i guess the reason why i'm kind of you know bringing that up is like i've heard i've heard other things from from people who are who are fans of the books but what, what i'm kind of getting at is this is denis villeneuve's 
version i i guess is what mm-hmm. i'm trying to say and but, but I, uh, it seems like he cares about the books oh absolutely <laughs> I, I, well i'm sure Lynch, well, I'm he sure liked them i'm sure but yeah i mean it's it's this this it seems like he wants to tell the whole story like he wants to do with his lord of the rings in space like <laughs> or yeah or game of you thrones know, in space or game yeah. of thrones sure yeah um but it, it's i it really is kind of like a master class though because it's like it you know the plot line of it moves around moves um you know pretty smoothly for the most part and it it it, it's like even if it's not necessarily being going into as much detail or as you know it's not necessarily like as super rich as the book in in cinematic language it's still um Mm -hmm. you know it it it's done very well probably about as well as it 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 can be honestly Um, yeah and i i don't want to make this all comparing to the lynch version either so the last thing i want to say about that in in relation to lynch is just that the monologue stuff the stuff they would do internal monologue before i thought it was really cool how they got the same information across in this with different Mm -hmm. like it would be someone says it in uh the friendman language and it's just subtitled well like yeah so that means well i mean that's a very good point because it's like the exposition in this is 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 brilliant yeah because they're doing more than just exposition they're actually like developing the character at the same time and they're progressing the plot at the same time that's a i'm kind of getting at it when i say it's a master class uh, because it's like it's condensing every it, it's it's like there's multiple layers of things happening at once and it's never like the movie just stops to deliver exposition it's mm-hmm. it, it's incredibly well done from like a, a cinematic language standpoint mm-hmm. um Even when they're giving exposition you're getting character development at the same right, time. Right. something yeah. else yeah yeah mm-hmm. exactly exactly um it, it's you know, gosh, there's there's so much there's so much to say. Um, oh, and not including anything. We don't see the emperor. We don't see the navigator. Well, the whole yeah. opening scene from the other one, not here. So. Well, well, I I think it's actually Which kind is- of interesting that we. So, there's been some complaints about that, like from fans uh, of the books, where or even you know the Lynch the movie, Lynch, yeah. Uh, it's like yeah we don't really see the, the the emperor even though he has this major part that he plays in you know in the story um you know we don't we really don't see him at all and i'm not entirely sure like if if it matters or not um well, it's, it's building hype i mean yeah, definitely <laughs> yeah. and it's also it's something similar with like the the harkonnens in it um i would have liked a little more of them to be honest yeah but i'm sure uh, we'll get more as part one you know sure well it's i i i think he was in it kind of just as much as he needed to be honestly but um mm-hmm. uh, th- that is something that needs to be said though um this is only part one of yeah. uh of the way they make it's not in any of the marketing but the when the title card comes up it's very clearly dune part one I did see honestly it. my biggest complaint about it is it it's it doesn't feel like a complete movie it was a weird place to end it i mean I, it wasn't too weird but you know it I didn't was... it didn't come you know it, it it clearly says are you we we need part two yeah well i, I was know? gonna i was gonna get into that We'll get, yeah, we'll get. Well, I was gonna get into that a little bit later, but if I had, I, I again, I love this movie. I, 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 I think it's it's phenomenal. But if I have one complaint about it, is that it doesn't, it really does not feel like a complete story. And and I knew it was only gonna be the first half of the book, but I was at least hoping that this film would end. You know, it, this film would feel like it had a complete arc so that even if we never got the follow-up we still had this one movie but they mm-hmm. doubled down on the fact that this is only the first half and that there's another movie and it that to me kind of guarantees that they're gonna do another one because yeah in the it's long, all but officially greenlit yeah at this point they're teasing it like yeah they, they've hinted 
I, the, the problem is in the long run, this isn't going to be valuable to them as half a story. Like, mm -hmm. even if this doesn't make the, you know, the numbers that they were hoping prior to the pandemic, they kind of have to go forward because it's like, if they if they do this and it's not a it's just only like half a story then it's uh, I don't know what they're gonna do it's just gonna be kind of like <laughs> it it just will be and it'll just be an incomplete movie basically it'll be more than Hodorowski's doing true <laughs> that's very true um but it it's like I almost think like Denis Villeneuve like once part two does come out um. Yeah, I think he's might do something like a director's cut and just release the oh, six, sure. uh, six hour cut of Dune and then it's like I watched Dune that. Book One or something like that. Or so uh, just just call it Dune, you know. Yeah. Um, um <laughs> oh, then, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, no, no worries. Um <laughs> but yeah, that's honestly my only real complaint about it is like uh, but I think calling it part one right at the beginning sort of prepared audiences for it to and on an kind of kind of an anticlimactic note really it's yeah just, yeah and they say this is just the beginning yeah they the actually end. and they in actually, the trailers yeah well they all and yeah that's like the last line in the movie and it's a little bit like uh well you know um <laughs> wait a year or two yeah what you guys think of this uh of, of uh so so this film had a really really star studied cast uh what do you guys think of like the uh the individual characters think, and the actors and their performances oscar isaac really surprised me i thought he was yeah more more leto oscar than he yeah, really he became great. that character yeah I, the only the only actor i have a complaint about is uh aquaman jason uh, <laughs> jason momoa yeah i I, he, I felt like everybody else just did such a good job that he seemed like an amateur in their company. Yeah, you know? sure. I, I didn't see. I didn't really have a problem with him. I, I, I thought he was fine. Um, mm -hmm. It is, you know, he's sort of like, um, you know, a, a different sort of father figure to uh, to Paul. Uh, an older brother. Kind yeah, of. that that sort of thing. And it's like I I you know enjoyed that aspect of the the relationship but then he's also you know shown to be very very noble you know especially um what happens to his character you know towards the end of the story honestly it was his line readings for me it was just like he sounded like something he sounded like he was in a completely different movie <laughs> sure mm. right i mean i feel like he would have been really good as the leader of the friendmen I, although I did like Javier Bardem a lot, but he could have filled that role really well because he was oh, I love this small part that Javier Bardem had. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, actually it was really great. great. It's actually hard for me to uh, agree with that. I I think Harvey, uh, Javier Bardem uh, did a pretty solid job with a bit. I'm not hard. saying better than him, but I'm just mean he might have been better at that role than Duncan Idaho. The 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 thing there is like if he was that role, he'd be be looking at more like Count Drogo, Jason right, Momoa. That's where my head's and, at. and less of <laughs> less of like Aquaman Jason Momoa. But right. I I feel like it kind of brought a little bit of levity to the proceedings and I was fine with that. I saw people fan casting Adam Driver for Duncan Idaho while ago so he does look like timothy shell neymar but i guess they're not like related but they're from the same i don't know yeah I, have been good too. I mean i don't know how i feel about that i mean i again i i'm not really super familiar with the source material but if duncan hio is supposed to be like the you know the 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 uh fighter sort of character then i, I think jason momoa kind of fits that a little bit better than adam driver yeah well well sure I, I didn't think he did it bad. I liked him as Duncan Idaho. Yeah, uh, it was fine. I mean, and the, the whole plot with him, too, was pretty... Um, you felt it. It was pretty cool, the way yeah. that 
yeah his character uh, one. one thing i thought was interesting is the gender bending of um oh yeah of uh of uh dr uh kinds um so originally written as a male character and played by max von sido in the lynch version mm-hmm. uh you know she's a um you know a uh, a woman in this version and uh i had absolutely zero problem with it <laughs> so yeah I, she was great like, yeah yeah she was she was fine um kind of an interesting sort of uh character because um kinds is sort of the window for uh for um the atreides to see into the world of the fremen because she's uh between worlds and you know yeah, I thought she I thought she did pretty good in that in that respect. Um mm-hmm. what do you what did you guys think of the Harkonnens though? Um, <laughs> um Dave Batista, I, I I kind of feel oh, like yeah. he, I don't think he was really in it enough for me to really uh be able to judge his his character <laughs> too much. Uh Rabat. Yeah, he was he was fine. It was like angry Drax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much. I mean, he really is it isn't in it that much. Like people are complaining that uh Baron Harkonnen isn't in it that much. I think he's in it more than Raban is. Um and I and I think the Baron, like I, I think he's in it just enough. Like the the kind of impression that I got with him was they wanted to kind of keep him behind the scenes because that's really where he's operating. And it really wasn't mm-hmm. until the last scene that we get with him that I had like a f- more a fuller understanding of where his mind at and what kind of person he actually is. And it's it's become very clear that he's you know, he's kind of, in a way, he's like a businessman. And he's yeah, also, very scheming and, and like, and mani- mani- super manipulative. And yeah. that's, that's really where he's, he's just like, you know, start selling the spice, but not too quickly. You don't want to drive the price down. But, you know, I had to pay for the, the, uh, the uh, operation that we pulled here. And it's just like, it was at that moment for me that I realized what kind of character he was. And, you know, setting him up, you know, hopefully for a more prominent uh, role in the next one, but I, I have I, to imagine, yeah, yeah. But I, but I feel like I, I feel like he was in it enough. That, that that's mm-hmm. kind of my take on it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I, like, I mean, obviously the <laughs> the floating aspect looks way better. Oh gosh. We used to. Oh, it's actually like super. I should stop super. comparing. I'm sorry, but oh, we can. Compare. I have to say, I, 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 we can compare. We can absolutely compare. Well, the thing yeah. is, Justin, you've seen the least of the Lynch ones, so it's good we had some perspective of someone who knew next to nothing going into yeah. it. Because a lot of it, I was watching it like, would I think this tooth scene is kind of goofy? If yeah. it wasn't so much better than the Lynch one, right? Yeah. Like in the Lynch one, it's it was so... a little goofy. That that, right. that okay. scene did sort of stick but, out amongst you know, because just because the rest of the movie was so. But but it's even serious. more it's even more like silly in the Lynch version. Yeah. Um, right. But I was well, I trying believe, to look I, at it. I completely it, but... believe that. Yeah. It was hard not to compare watching it. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I I think for me, uh, like. I got a much clearer idea of what even you know the 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 implications and the stakes are uh, from this mm-hmm. version that I did from the uh, Lynch version. It's kind of like, oh no, the Emperor and the Harkonnens are attacking. But in this one, it's you know the gravity of the situation. The ha- yeah, because you care about House Atreides. Yeah, and it's and, like and it, it, well, it kept making me think. Oh, this is what I was supposed to feel yeah. in this scene. You know, like well, it's it set up like, you know, what was at stake? It set up like, you know, how things, you know, were operating. Even when like uh, Duke Leto, uh, Oscar Isaac's character, you know, tells the the people in the um in the little sand harvester, hey, you need to get out of there. And they say, you know, what about the spice? And it's like, damn the spice. It's like mm-hmm. that feels like it has a lot more weight in this one because. Uh, like it's it's like you realize like these people have been living under the oppressive regime of the Harkonnens and it's like this is a valuable substance that's more valuable than they are and if they just leave it behind it's like they, they're gonna die anyway um, mm-hmm. and then 
Duke Leto saying like, no, you know, fuck the spice, you know, you know, get out of there. There's actually like, even for him, there's like some hint of like consequences because it's like, in some ways, this, this stuff is more valuable than, than human life. And so almost like his compassion in some ways is a weakness. Uh, and that's For the job he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's, it really kind of shows you how dangerous and oppressive and, you know, um, you know, politically frightening this world actually is. That specifically feels very Game of Thrones with like the Starks mm -hmm. want to do the noble thing, but they live, they realize they're in the system that mm -hmm. punishes people doing the right thing. Right. Yeah. Basically. So it has basically. a similar hook there. Yeah, and that's kind of where, you know, this movie, like, really succeeded over the Lynch version, because it's like, you, you know, Duke Leto does ultimately suffer because, you know, he didn't, um, you know, you know, wanting to be a noble ruler ultimately kind of led to the destruction of his house. And it's, it's unbelievably cruel to see to see mm -hmm. it happen unfold like that um and that's not what at all i i got out of watching the, the david lynch version of the movie no 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 <laughs> um what about the what do you guys think of the the sandworms that was like one a big thing that i was really looking forward to yeah boy yeah i uh yeah, yeah. what are you gonna say justin um yeah you know it's a big special effect and it could have been cheesy and it wasn't yeah you know, it, it the was... scale the way they showed the scale was that's mm -hmm. part of like this big screen experience like i mm -hmm. wouldn't have even seen the actors if i were watching it on my tv you know All right well like, they it, yeah and yeah you know, the showing you the scale of it it's almost it almost is like godzilla or something it's like you're putting it up against like it, the thing is when you're out in the desert there's very little you can actually compare right good something point. to for size but the, they do a good job of like putting this thing next to things that we can like recognize and gauge the, and you, the ship it, it swallows up yeah you like feel that. you feel how enormous and powerful and godlike this thing actually is and uh it's that scene that we were just talking about like with the spice harvester is is fraught with tension because it's like mm -hmm. oh lord he coming you know <laughs> it, 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 it's 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 it, it's really really intense um yeah yeah no it's fan fantasy i wanted to, i i do want i did want to see a little bit more sandworm honestly i i was <laughs> i i really really did but um i'm not but do you think I, when it it came up and like looked at paul like What's well, that? that's an interesting scene and i actually was listening to somebody who's a fan of of the books um after we watch in uh he actually mentioned something really interesting to me uh, he said that that scene actually teases something that happens in one of the dune sequel books okay and i'm like okay. i don't know how far ahead denis villeneuve's thinking i know he's he wants to do well, Dune messiah okay. uh the, but the third one or second one it's the second book yeah so okay. he'd finish so dune part two would be the last half of the book and then i guess he he wants to do doom messiah as a third movie and i think aren't there six original books by frank herbert yeah i think there's children of dune and then i'm not entirely sure after that and then i think his son continued mm -hmm. to write using his father's notes um but yeah, uh, apparently that scene is supposed to be teasing something that happens later, like a, a connection that Paul has with the uh, with the sandworm. Okay, uh, but See, um, that, again, nothing like that in Lynch's, where it does tie everything up at the end. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't seem to have any like aspiration to come back to this world, right? Yeah. Or leave it open for someone else to. But I think that is the nice thing about the Lynch version is that it's contained. It, yeah, yeah it, it does yeah, it does tell a complete story and this one is leaving a lot of loose ends because it's not intended to be one movie um, mm -hmm. um but yeah i i think i think that scene is, is kind of interesting it's just the the issue is it's not clear to me what it's what the significance of it is just yet other than like 
just staring into the mouth of of a god and just mm-hmm. the awe of being there um you know that i, I mean it, it is powerful because it's like when you're looking into the sandworm's mouth it is like it looks like a giant eye in some way so mm-hmm. you know um it's black just, hole yeah yeah it's, it's staring into uh yeah something uh something uh you know if black hole would be kind of hint of infinite mm-hmm. you know, the hint of the yeah, infinite yeah. um the um so josh brolin's character and oh yeah was, yeah uh, gurney who i think probably survived we don't really see his uh his death uh in this um but i i kind of like i kind of liked his uh his character a little bit it's a little bit stereotypical he's like the grizzled old war veteran it's like i've seen the harkonnens firsthand (laughs) you you know they're they're brutal they're animals (laughs) um but well i liked um in the i'm doing this again but in the lynch one he seems like Paul's closest confidant, kind of Patrick Stewart's character, mm-hmm. whereas this one really emphasized Duncan Idaho. Yeah, yeah as, it's like his bro. There's like a stronger Just relationship nice. there. Yeah. Um, one one thing we haven't really talked about yet, uh, and is, is talking of the casting in this. Like, there's one actor in this that for me is like a real standout. Rebecca and, Ferguson. Uh, yeah, Re- Rebecca Ferguson as Jessica uh, is mm-hmm. like unbelievably good, and I I almost want to like you know throw it in right now. If Dune is going to get any kind of like award consideration, yeah. I think she might be up for best actress. Yeah, yeah, uh, well it, deserved. That's it. Yeah, yeah, she is. You know, it is a beautiful complex very nuanced role um jessica like trying to find the balance between being you know a mother and also like fulfilling her duty to the uh the bene jesuit uh, benny jesuit and it's uh it's really really like the the expressions that she gives you know when she's like confronted like like when oscar isaac is telling her you know will you will you protect my son and she looks at him like with my life and it's like i'm not i'm not talking to you i'm talking to the the benny jesuit mm-hmm. and it's just like realizing what he's asking it's like, it's like well yeah of course he's my son but then there's like something like bigger it's like where's your real loyalty lie and it's like realizing that look on her face where it's like she she has to kind of make a choice it's it's really powerful Mm-hmm. um yeah so yeah i think bearing the pain of the the box yeah. so yeah that was yeah. really so that was actually really interesting because that that scene they really actually put a lot more emphasis on jessica than than paul and it's like jessica yeah. realizing what she's putting her son through and realizing that if he's not strong enough he could die and you know that whole scene there is like it's it's much more painful to watch not just because of what paul is going through but also what jessica is going through and the her mental anguish of it it's it's really really powerful yeah 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 so yeah i i I commend her performance in this oh and her using the voice too it's like badass like she had that whole scene Mm mm-hmm with uh that whole effect was so much better too yeah, the way that yeah, worked yeah oh well i mean that's another thing too is like she just sound- she wore a lot of hats is all i was gonna say about her sure sure but i mean the sound in this uh, i i think was fantastic the sound design because they they really do guide yeah. the audience with with sound when a character's going through something like when paul sees you know kind of experiences the effects of the spice for the first time it's like everything mm-hmm. else in the world like closes out and he's like focusing on this one little thing and using the sound to kind of guide the audience a little bit uh in that in that regard it's, and it's the same thing with the voice too it's like there's like a little bit of a pause like yeah, you every- hear it and then their mouth moves right 
Oh, no, it was the opposite. It's like they, you opposite, see their yeah. mouth moving, but then it's like it cuts out and then the voice comes out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's a really, really cool effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and also Hans Zimmer's uh, score for this, I, I think, is is very beautiful. Oh, done. man. Yeah. yeah, that was excellent, especially I love Toto, but. But <laughs> it I just felt so epic and well, I and so I actually I, I said this in the I know you the, like the yeah, I actually but... do like the Toto score uh, a lot <laughs> and I actually I, I like the music a lot in this one too it's it's the one thing where I can I can say that I I was a fan of the soundtrack for for both uh, cinematic adaptations of Dune sure yeah I like this one more. <laughs> sure. Well, it's more, it's more layered. It's more complicated. Um, you know, there's a lot of like the uh, sort of Middle Eastern sort of inspiration mm-hmm. that, that we've heard in all the trailers and everything, but it's, it's really, really well done. Um, the, oh, and the, uh, the orna, ornithopters are a lot cooler in this version. <laughs> the what? Uh, the, the, the uh, little ships, the dragonfly ships. They oh, were, yeah. Were those yeah, even like, in Lynch? they were but they were like i don't even remember what they look like it was like some box yeah. or something it's like those are great is, those are like these, are, these are much more badass mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah much more like gritty uh you know mm-hmm. than, like, yeah, well, sci-fi. I mean, well i mean they're, they're just they're just high sci-fi they, they just look cooler yeah you know? <laughs> um, like the shots from in them it felt very like, it felt like a war movie you know well most definitely most yeah uh, yeah um yeah, so the the uh, there's a there's a lot of um I, I don't know there's there's a, there's a lot of really really great things about this. I, I mean it, it's if you haven't seen it already by this point, you know, bruh, yeah, you know, yeah. What are you doing? Go 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 see this thing. Don't don't just. I have a friend who's these... reading the book and then he's going to go watch it. But okay, I told him sure. just read the first half and then go watch it. You know, right? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. theaters. Probably it might be around for a while, maybe till like Christmas, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. they might keep it in theaters. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I mean, see how far it goes, right? I mean, it kind of really depends on you know how many people are seeing it this weekend. Um mm-hmm. I I Denis Villeneuve says that um as soon as he gets the green light for part two, he's ready to go. So if they, yeah. if we get that by this week, like it's like okay, go ahead, and they start shooting in like 2022, it's possible the se- sequel might come out by 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see um, it. Yeah, it's it's possible. Um, that could have sworn they had stuff shot already. I, I'm sure they. they I, are, I'm yeah. sure they do. I mean, yeah. you you they must have at least got like some B roll. Because it's it's like you if you're there, they so very clearly uh, intended mm-hmm. this to be just the first half of the movie that it almost feels a little bit like a bait and switch that it's marketed as Dune and not Doom Part One. That yeah, I can't I, imagine having access yeah, to certain mu- sets and locations and they not must have knowing. shot. I feel like they must have shot something. Yeah, like already it's it's just it's it's too there's too much that they've already kind of invested in this to Mm -hmm. to not have already like done something Uh, but um but yeah that is my only real complaint about it is like i feel it yeah Yeah. if you're going in this expecting to see a complete story you're going to be disappointed because it's not it very very clearly ends not even really on a cliffhanger it's it, it ends like just without you know any kind of complete resolution, resolution. At, yeah. at all, at I mean, all he, he meets the the girl he's been dreaming about spoilers yeah but well I mean, yeah that, sure. I, I spoilers for like a 60 <laughs> year old book um well and specifically where this movie ends but <laughs> sure um and that that is another thing is like i felt like after the empire and the harkonnens attack like about midway through the film it it does sort of kind of feel a little bit ungainly because it's like okay well 
where is this going to end? Like you almost, if this was like Empire Strikes Back or something, the way to end it would be after the Harkonnens attack because it's like, that's like- sure. the I could have done, it would have been nice to have a little more time before they wrecked everything. Like sure. with of Paul living down there in the city with mm -hmm. uh, all those characters. Right. No, I, I, I mean, I, 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 again, I feel like the way it was done and the way it's paced out, I think it's 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 a masterclass, like like I said. But I do feel like it it, it becomes unclear about what where is this going to go because we know this is only part one. So mm -hmm. where do they end it? And they kind of and, and they do end it in a place that feels logical, if not like resolute. But it, it's also until we get there, it's almost like you're you're struggling to find like okay, where are we landing here? You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like you know you're trying to like you're flying a helicopter and you're trying to like maneuver it and figure out where it's gonna. It's a little bit like it's a little bit ungainly. It's um, less like a, a traditional movie for sure, and more like a, the I, first entry in like a. If this was made into a show, they could have split it up into like, you know, two or three 40 minute episodes yeah, for to, this movie. Yeah, to be honest, like as much as I'm enamored with, you know, Hollywood's, you know, long um, sought out attempt to adapt, you know, this monster science fiction book um mm -hmm. into a movie i i feel ultimately the best thing you could do is a mini series of some kind you know there was a sci-fi channel mini series there was well. yeah and i heard I didn't talk about I that heard, but... yeah i i heard it was okay i heard it was a good <laughs> sure. adaptation if nothing if nothing else. a faithful yeah yeah, yeah. i heard it's okay. better than like it got better reviews than the lynch version but at the same time, I, d I don't really hear about it, like, too much. <laughs> like, people don't talk about it like it was some masterpiece. Or anything. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. It's just like, eh, it was, yeah, it's whatever, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's just kind of cool to have a big, epic sci-fi film that takes itself seriously and actually deals with, like, serious issues and themes and has gravitas and weight to it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, that's to me what makes, you know, the prospect of Dune so exciting. You know? Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of seems like it could be the new standard because Star Wars fell off pretty hard. Yeah. Well, I think people are more used to the idea of like seeing these movies like, like, you know, cinematic universes like people know. It's like, you know, this is, you know, only part of, of a Marvel movie or, mm -hmm. you know, part of the part of the bigger picture. Um, it's almost like a more ideal environment in some ways than like Lord of the Rings uh, back, back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s because like Fellowship of the Ring, you know, while it ends, you know, same as how the book ends, it's still like not a complete story even then that's uh, true yeah yeah but you know audiences went for it there because i think they made it clear that they were doing the whole trilogy of books not just fellowship and and uh, there is source material like you can continue to consume the story in another medium if you're really you know caught on it sure 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 but you know i i don't know i think the only thing with this like i said is like it just wasn't marketed as being just the first half and yeah it, I mean, i'm not sure how people feel about that uh, honestly it, like i said it's, it continues to be the only thing that i have a problem with yeah i hear what you're saying it seems like reviews are pretty positive but oh the reviews are positive yeah. the audience yeah. score is actually i think better than the critic score um oh really yeah, I, at least at least that's what it was on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it was like 84 from critics and 94 from audiences. And it's like, oh, wow. I didn't think audiences would necessarily, you know, latch onto it that much. But um, mm -hmm. uh, unless they were just, you know, super fans or, or you know, like I said, just kind of people that want to see like an, a, a serious epic sci-fi movie. Yeah, um, it's been Metacritic too. Seventy-five uh, critic reviews and eight point three 
user score. So, all right. Uh, well, I mean, I think that's all positive, and it, you know, even again, even if the the box office numbers don't quite, um, you know, it, I, I mean, it, it's hard to imagine this movie making like a profit, like in the short term, just because right. of, it's an investment. Yeah, I, 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 I think they're being smart about it and i think they realize that there's other factors we have to look into and like i said i i, I don't think it's valuable to them as is half a movie it it, it, need, it needs to be finished even if we don't get doom messiah out of it I, they need to finish this other yeah the, at least the first book yeah for sure yeah um but really um this is this was a a winner for me i i really did love the hell out of this movie it was it was very powerful um it's very it's very well done um you know denis villeneuve just you know had my you know it's like he had my complete trust after blade runner 2049 and he really did not disappoint me yeah here. it was nice uh, to see a story like this done justice yeah, yeah. finally yeah right. it, yeah no kidding yeah um uh did you guys have any final thoughts about it no i mean i think i pretty much said it all just checking my notes oh well what do you guys who guys would you guys cast as the emperor since we haven't seen him yet we can Uh, speculate well we're not gonna do salvador dolly like uh you know (laughs) wanted which he wanted a hundred he wanted a hundred thousand dollars per hour and joe worski uh agreed but then structured it so that he would uh only have to be sh- uh he'd shoot all the scenes in one hour and then right. and it's then the, and then the producers were like uh like what are you what are you doing that's ridiculous um yeah he's got a different method yeah yeah <laughs> um but who would i cast as the emperor um i don't know um if he was if he, if he was still alive, I kind of would like to see like Max von Sydow, but I know that's where my head went. So. Yeah, the, I heard it, it, people it, throwing around Idris Elba. Might be interesting. I don't know if he's old enough though, right? Like, he's, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if does the Emperor need to be super old. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I don't know. Um, you know, would it be Morgan Freeman? <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure. Who nice. I'm, I'm honestly. I'm honestly not sure who I would cast in in that part. Um, I'm I'm more interested, like, because uh, the character of Fade it was not in this. Oh I wonder, right. I wonder if um, you know, who's gonna play him? And I think they said Bill Skarsgård is gonna play. That would him make make sense, yeah. Because it's Stalin, so I mean, mm-hmm. uh, or they could just bring back Sting. <laughs> I don't think he wants that. <laughs> I don't think he wants that heat. Uh, he was um. I, I, I believe I, I saw in an interview he was offered a cameo and as an intern to down. And I'm like, oh, that's a shame because that, that'd be kind of fun, really. It makes sense. <laughs> I see why he didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, it's memorable, but it's not, a, it doesn't necessarily reflect on him too favorably. So, yeah, I would want to just divorce completely from that intellectual property. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. But it would have been fun, though. I mean, it, it would have been it, cool. There, there are some nods to the Lynch one in the in this, like the the Did fact you... that the Harkonnens are still very much like inspired by H.R. Giger, and also the mm-hmm. stealth suits are basically the same design as the Lynch version. Um, sure. Which, yeah. Which, which I, I don't know. What know. Lynch I don't... from this. Yeah, I'm not sure if he if that's just like Frank Herbert was just super descriptive in his book, and right. so both film versions just sort of pulled the same design. But I I I do feel like Denis probably does you know admire and so I, watching this I do feel like he admires Lynch's attempt in in some regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can I, see that. He's yeah. A... Because it was the, it was the first, you know. So it, it in regardless of whether or not it was, you know, <laughs> all that good, it it still it clearly kind of left an impression on people. It's the OG, and there are there's a fan base for sure. I didn't watch that fan cut in the last week, but I, I maybe I'll yeah, check it out at some I, point. I 
I find it difficult to to revisit <laughs> that that movie. <laughs> maybe um, after part two of this comes out. Yeah, maybe then we can compare it again. Um, but or I yeah, will. my own but, time. But yeah, um, this movie was great. Uh, it's certainly one of my favorites of this year. Um, I kind of measure that. It's like, do I want to see this movie again? Um, yeah, I kind, I kind I do. of do. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, really I, I do. do I do want to. I do want to experience it again. So, to me, that's a, that's a good kind of measurement. It's the same. It was the same thing with uh, Godzilla versus Kong. But Godzilla versus hmm. Kong, it was entertaining for completely different reasons. It's, <laughs> it's, what a comparison. <laughs> um, but uh, no, see see this movie. Uh, if you haven't, what what are you doing with your life? This is a, it's a, it's a fantastic. Um, I don't know what you're doing like, listening to this podcast. Yeah, we're just we're just, th- we're just three assholes, like, and we've been saying for weeks we're going to watch it. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Now we're just like you're basically just jacking off Denis Villeneuve. You know, they've never now we're just. <laughs> we uh, always knew that's what this yeah, would be. Yeah, yeah. Ba- basically, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's like I went into it like with the possibility maybe it was going to be boring, but it it, it wasn't. You know, I, I try yeah. to be objective yeah. even when I'm. It was long. I'm like, it was, it, you know, it, it, but being in the like, theater that long, I'm like, it's got to be yeah, really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I try to be super objective, um, even if I'm hyped for a movie, and uh, this, uh, I wasn't disappointed. You know, so nice. yeah, yeah, it's it's good, um, but uh, yeah, I think that's our, I think that's our show for this week. Um, if you enjoyed, Went long this week. yeah, if you if you enjoyed this. Uh, conversation uh like the video uh subscribe to the channel and uh, we will have more content for you guys soon uh this not is... doing stuff anymore well <laughs> yeah yeah this is the last this was the first and last dune episode um, unless there's some crazy controversy in the next week or some no, shit uh, i mean there will be, i mean if we're joking i mean there's going to be well we're, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna end up talking about something with it but we'll Hopefully something else more relevant uh, to science fiction will come along and we can also discuss that alongside uh, the, uh, the new Dune movie. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Matt Jarjosa, Mother, and this is the uh, Studio Utani podcast. Uh, joined like by Justin. Subscribe. Yeah, Justin and Baker with us. Uh, we're the last survivors of the, uh, of the podcast and uh, signing off. Howdy. Bye.